Back in DC, once again. Walking down the streets of DC. Walking down the streets. Walking down the streets of DC. Walking down the streets. Woohoo! What, what are we here for? I can't remember it again, Dude, man. Dude, it's a six time. Hey. I've told him six times. Hey. We're going bad with to like the Black you. Republican Trailblazer Award. Yeah. That's why you say it and I don't. All right. I just say we're in DC. I can remember that. It's just too low. <laughs> <laughs> no clue where we're going, though. Ooh, look at the Washington Post. Isn't that lovely? The Washington Post. The Washington Post, as it is. So we're here. Front door. Hey, Lauren. Nanny, you know where we are? Yeah. Trailblazer Wolf. Awesome. Pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Say what? You find a bathroom. No one even. Yo. Yo, this is the bathroom. This is dope. So this is mad dope. We're at the Trailblazer Awards. It's just starting off. We're getting some food right now. I have no clue what's going on. Oh, country boys don't know how to act. I was offered some type of food. I don't know what this is. And she was like, no, grab a napkin. I'm just like, grab a napkin? I'm not used to grabbing napkins. I'm just used to grabbing food and stuff in my mouth. <laughs> so it's just weird. What you got on your plate? I have no clue what's going on. Oh yeah, I don't even know if we can like go up there. I'm talking about a party, like I don't even know who these people are. <laughs> Republican leaders. 
and uh, for tonight's event, we do encourage posting um, all of the fun that you're having on social media. And there are two hashtags, um, if you wouldn't mind using, and that would be hashtag lead right and hashtag BRTA. I see everybody taking pictures. I want to see all of those on social media tonight. Star, that means you too. <laughs> so before we begin, let's take a moment to honor our flag. With liberty and justice for all. God bless America. America Johnson. Now, it is with my great honor that I get to in introduce a woman whom I truly, truly admire. Not just for her commitment and dedication to the party, but for her true championship of President Trump's agenda because it is guaranteed to lead many black Americans to prosperity. But she's also a fierce advocate for the president himself, but not just for those reasons. She's also very much a strong supporter of me personally, and I'm very grateful and thankful for that. Please join me in welcoming my friend, the chairwoman of the National Republican Committee, Ronna McDaniel. Hello, everyone! Woo -hoo -hoo! Okay, we are in the most beautiful venue. We're here to celebrate. Let's whoop it up. Hello, everyone! Woo -hoo -hoo! Thank you so much for joining us today. Isn't Katrina amazing? We love Katrina Pearson. So there are a few people I have to start at by thanking. So, uh, several of our RNC members are here. Uh, Robin Hayes from Texas. Robin, raise your hand. He's our National Committee man from Texas. I don't see you, Robin. Okay, Robin, right over here. Uh, Glenn McCall, who is our budget chairman, and he is the co-chairman of our convention in Charlotte. He is our National Committee man from South Carolina. Hello, Glenn. From the U.S. Virgin Islands, we have Javon Williams. Javon, where are you? He's not here. Javon got married today, I think. Is that right? Did you get married today? Yeah, so congratulations. He got married and said, why didn't I just go to the Trailblazers event? And then from North Carolina, Ada Fisher. Dr. Ada Fisher. Ada, where are you? Ada. Up here. Ada's up here. You gotta all go meet Ada, because she is amazing. And then of course we have uh, some wonderful uh, friends of the RNC and African American leaders. Uh, Dr. Leonard Hayes, who was recognized last year. Dr. Hayes, where are you? I don't know where exactly you are. Know, right? Katrina Pearson, who is a great spokesperson for the Trump campaign and for our party. And Paris Denard. Paris, we love you on TV. Thank you for all that you do. Let's say thank you to them. this year. How many of you were at our event last year? Raise your hand. Yay, thank you. Well, last year we had a nice lunch. It was very formal. Tonight we're celebrating in this wonderful, wonderful restaurant, The Park, and it is owned by Mark and Ann Barnes. It is an African-American owned business, and for 11 years it has been the place to be in D.C. So let's say thank you to The Barnes for Appreciate it. I'm honored to celebrate Black History Month with you as we recognize the achievements of Republican, I'm going to say this, Republican African American leaders in our party and country. Last year, we reflected on some of the visionaries in our nation's history. We honored the legacy of the abolitionist Frederick Douglass and celebrated the bicentennial of his birth. We also marked the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s death. This year, Let's celebrate the history of the Republican Party. Our party was founded in 1854 by abolitionists. They organized the first Republican convention in my home state of Michigan. Woo! Yay, Michigan. Hey, Kelly. Uh, uh, specifically around an anti-slavery platform. They elected Abraham Lincoln president, and a Republican-controlled Congress passed the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. This is our party. They celebrated the end of slavery with Juneteenth in Texas, where conservatives of different races joined together to lay down the roots for our party and their state. 
It was the party of Lincoln that fought for the rights of African Americans and passed civil and voting rights legislation over the years. This is a legacy each of us cherishes. It is a leg legacy every single one of us needs to protect. I am inspired by the ways each of you protect that legacy from your work, from your work to your service and leadership in your communities. Our Trailblazers Award honorees do an incredible job carrying on this legacy and spreading our message. Glenn McCall, who's right here, and Dean Nelson are strong leaders whose contributions have enriched our party and impacted countless communities. Glenn has served as an RNC National Committee man from South Carolina for a decade. His long record of public service includes leadership positions within his local community and another decade in the U.S. Air Force. Let's say thank you to Glenn. Nelson is a minister and a founder of the Douglas Leadership Institute, an organization of faith leaders who champion pro-life and free market values. He's also national outreach director of the Pro-Life Human Coalition and chairman of the board for the Frederick Douglass Foundation. Dean's commitment to urban communities across the country has empowered others to step up and lead with faith and conviction. Both, let's say thank you to Dean. Yes. bow tie on tonight. I like it. Both of our awardees are inspirations for the next generation of African American leaders and I'm so I am so honored to recognize their work and celebrate their contributions. Let us also celebrate the African American activists and leaders our team meets across the country and so many of you who are making a difference for our country and our party. And let me just share with you a few of the stories we've heard as we've traveled the country. And five million new jobs in a strong labor market. Tax cuts are helping people save money and start and grow businesses. And listen to this. African American small business ownership increased by 400% from 2017 to 2018. I want to repeat that because this is what this administration does and the media does not share the story. Between 2017 and 2018, African American small business ownership has increased 400%. What does that mean? It means lives are better. They are making more money. Families are, are doing well. That is what President Trump and the Republican Party is about. Minority business ownership has grown by over 180%. The President's Opportunity Zones initiative will spur economic development in nearly 9,000 communities that need it the most, which will impact 35 million Americans. The president has increased school choice, and we know that this is imperative. Increased school choice funding by 42 million to make sure that children get the best education regardless of their zip code. Isn't that what we want from a president? <laughs> he signed in the legislation, uh, he signs legislation to increase funding to HBCU programs by over 14%. He provided $300 million. We're not going to hear this on the news, so guess who has to tell it? All of us here. He provided $300 million in loan forgiveness to HBCUs after Hurricane Katrina and Rita. President Trump's compassion and sense of justice inspired, again, recently, inspired us again recently when he signed the historic Criminal Justice Reform First Steps Act. <laughs> The First Steps Act fixed a system that had failed Americans for too long. It reformed mandatory minimum sentencing laws that disproportionately affected minorities. And all of you saw Matthew Charles at the State of the Union. How many of you saw Matthew Charles with our president? He is the first man who was released under the First Steps Act. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison. 35 years. and. While he was in prison, he took Bible courses. He became a law clerk. He was a mentor and friend to others. He rebuilt his life, and now he has another chance to get his life back and give it back to his community. The president delivers for the African American communities, and we are thrilled to stand with him. So I have a call to action for all of you. Thank you for standing with our president. 
Thank you for being champions of our message. We are going to need all hands on deck in 2020. Yes. I want to introduce you to some of our rising stars and leaders in our party who are going to help us win in 2020. Rising stars, we have all these uh, young kids that have come here, people under 30 years old, which is great, 20 of them that we have brought in. Please raise your hand, rising stars. All right, everybody look at our rising stars. Thank you. These are our next generation of trailblazers. Go talk to one of them tonight. Mentor them. Find out about their lives. We need them to be part of our party. They are from California, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Florida, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, and Maryland. Thank you for being here. They are rare conservatives in their communities, and they're here to attend CPAC. They're getting media training, visiting the Heritage Foundation, and tonight you're all going to mentor them and make a friend with these rising stars, I hope. I hope each of you will stay active as we head into this critical election cycle. Continue to lead in your communities. Get your friends and family involved. We need to talk to the leadership of Chairwoman McDaniel. I am very, very excited to feel like we're going to have some true Republican success in 2020. And she's only touched just a sliver of what the administration has been working on uh, for, the, for communities, for the economy, uh, for the greatness of America. And at the campaign, we launched a website called promiseskept.com. So when you take your messages out there, you are fully equipped with everything you need to shut down any liberal. Now, let's take a moment before we get on with the awards. Before we, before we get on with the awards, let's take a moment to lift our recipients, our chairwoman, our party, and our members up in prayer. Please welcome Bishop Leon Benjamin, the chairman of Richmond, Virginia Republican Party. Good evening, everyone, and uh, God bless everyone tonight. I think it is uh, not by accident that we are here tonight from all across uh, the nation. As we are praying, uh, we thank God for our chairwoman, uh, Ronnie Daniel. Can we give it up for her? Just thank God for her. And all of the leadership here, as we, as we go before the Lord tonight, I think it's very uh, preferential that we understand how important faith is to the Republican Party of Virginia. Uh, we must not take it for granted that there is an edge when you believe in the impossible and expect uh, the incredible and you're able to touch the intangible and you allow yourself to see things that sometimes seem very impossible. So as we pray tonight, I want to let you know that we don't have a Republican Party problem. We don't even have a Democratic Party problem. We have a human problem. And if we are going to be officials and party leaders that represent our constituents, we must know that our nation, like never before, founded on principles of Christianity and Judaism, that we will endure the test of time if we remember how we got started. And so as we pray tonight, you might want to grab someone or touch someone. I think this is very, especially with our rising stars, they're going to need all the help and all the power and all the grace to be able to stand and to stand on the tough issues as our President Trump is doing even right now. Father God, we thank you tonight Thank you, Lord, O oh God, that you, O oh God, have not given up on us as a nation. Thank you, Father, O oh God, that you have allowed us to gather from all walks of life. It's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, or red or yellow, but it is a human thing. We are all one race, and we thank you as we celebrate African Americans tonight and all of the honorees and our chairwoman and all of the leaders and the rising stars. Father, we ask for a grace now to not depart from our biblical worldview. We ask for a grace, O oh God, even when it feels inconvenient, that we not depart, O oh God, from the tough issues, whether it be abortion or same-sex attraction, 
or whether it be, O oh God, even with our national security. Father, we pray right now for our president, Donald J. Trump, as he's traveling. Cover him. Cover his family, our vice president, his family, all of our elected officials. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle they're on. Father, we know that you can work, O oh God, and you can move on the hearts of men and women. We ask that you bless the Republican Party. Bless it, O oh God, every state, every unit, every person that endeavors to keep a biblical worldview, that endeavors to keep the promises of our Constitution, life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. Father, we ask tonight that you cover us by your grace and protect us all and keep us safe from all harm and danger. We ask that you bless this awesome restaurant, the park, and that you allow us continually tonight to embrace one another, to form new friendships, new alliances, partnerships, and even, oh God, that you would allow the love of God to be spread from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Save us and we shall be saved. Keep us, and we shall be kept. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Let everyone say amen and give God some praise. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Distinguished recipients, let's welcome to the stage Chief Operating Officer of Daniels Development, Kevin Daniels. Ms. Pearson for that introduction. It's good to see everybody. Um, this this year is, a, uh, is an honor for me. It's an honor and a privilege that I get to present this award to someone that I've known for the better part of a decade, somebody that I trust completely, and somebody that I'm honored above all else to call a friend. I first met uh, Reverend Dean Nelson over a decade ago when I was trying to, I was living in North Carolina just figuring out what I was going to do with my life. I was newly married. That's a whole other story. I was still trying to figure that out too. <laughs> but trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life to be able to A, serve the Lord, and B, to provide for my family. And um, I was introduced to, to Dean by the, the late Tim Johnson, uh, the co-founder of the Frederick Douglass Foundation. And what Dean, I don't even think Dean knows this, that I first met Dean at a Ma'afa 21 uh, showing. And at the time, I was in a transition where I was considering becoming the president of the NAACP in a certain county in North Carolina. But when I went to this Ma'afa 21 showing, I met Dean through Tim Johnson, and both of those gentlemen encouraged me to look at my faith, look at the principles and the values that I hold near and dear as a person. And they also told me to take the Frederick Douglass Foundation. They said, go back and pray and come back with a yes. So that's what I did. And I became the president of the Frederick Douglass Foundation of North Carolina. And throughout that whole journey, I've been able to lean on Dean Nelson. With being able to work for Dean, Dean has so much going on in his life with running the Frederick Douglass Foundation, running the Douglass Leadership Institute, being part of the Human Coalition, Wellington Boone Ministries, homeschooling three kids. I mean, it's just the, the, the list runs on and on. But one thing, Dean, that I was able to witness from his life, he didn't even have to tell me. I was just able to watch and witness Dean's faithfulness. First to the Lord, to his wife, and to the principles and values that he holds near and dear. And I learned a lot from watching Dean, and that's how I was able to go from working at Kmart in the produce department when I first met Dean, to being the Director of Community and Constituent Affairs for the Governor of North Carolina eight years later. Woo! <laughs> and throughout all of that, Dean has always been encouraging. You know, and, and through, with dealing with the faith community, with dealing with the communities in general, and everybody knows dealing with politics, there's a lot of selfishness within that. A lot of people looking out for themselves. What can I get from me? Dean is one of the handful of people that I can point to that is not selfish, but is selfless. Dean is always willing to give an encouraging word. 
Dean is always willing to reach into his own pocket and give of his own resources to help people like me achieve my goals and my visions. So with that, I would like to present this award, 2019 Black Republican Trailblazer Award, to my friend and mentor, Reverend Dean Nelson. Wow, thank you, Kevin. I just want to say, first of all, in the words of the great abolitionist, I am a dyed-in-the-wool Republican and would never be a part of any other party except the party of liberty and progress. The great Frederick Douglass has been an example to me since I was a kid, and I have tried to emulate and to live according to the standards of Mr. Douglass. We just recently celebrated the 200th birthday of Frederick Douglass, and I can say that it has been a journey and an honor to be able to serve with some of you here in this room uh, as President Trump appointed us to be uh, federal commissioners to acknowledge the life and legacy of the great Frederick Douglass. So let's give it up for President Trump for doing that. I don't have any prepared remarks, but I do want to say just a few things. Number one, the Douglas Leadership Institute, we exist to engage the faith community, particularly on three areas, to strengthen the black family, criminal justice reform, and economic opportunity. Can somebody say economic opportunity? Good opportunity. Listen, a lot of people talk about, you know, the different parts of uh, the, the Republican Party from, you know, the economic conservatives, defense conservatives, and social conservatives. I just want to tell you, any creature worth his salt, when there's a good economy, the ties go up. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> so we owe a lot to the president for putting our country back on a platform for economic opportunity. And I'm grateful to be able to say that our party is standing firm on the principles that will encourage more people like me to join. As I close, I want to give you guys a picture because for all of those who are in the room who are committed to engaging diversity, let's give it another round of applause for our chairwoman who has done a commit has a commitment to Woo! diversity within the party. I won't say how long ago, but some time ago, here in this city, I was a student at Howard University. And when I was a student, not knowing a whole lot, as some students uh, you know, pretend that they know more than they do, I was caught up in a protest. We protested for four days. We shut down the administration. It was one of the most organized protests that I had ever been a part of. But as a student who was ignorant, the protest was opposing the new person who was going to be on the board for Howard, who was Lee Atwater, who was the chair of the Republican Party. <laughs> My point with sharing that is, but somebody still took time with me to help encourage me, to instruct me, and to guide me to recognize that the principles of the Republican Party were not just for rich white Americans, but they were for all Americans. And so my encouragement to us, as I'm someone who works with grassroots organizations around the country, is I want to encourage each of us not to give up on the real opportunity of engaging people that are in communities that are a little bit diverse, communities that may not look like your community. Because the reality is, right now, the Democrats are giving us some great opportunities. Just last week with Bishop Benjamin, we were down there in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, yeah. Occupied with a governor who seems to be more concerned about black face than really saving black babies. We challenged, yeah, come on somebody. We, we marched, look, I went to UVA, so I, I, I know what, is, what it was like every semester to see someone like their lieutenant governor, or rather someone like the attorney general who dressed up in black face on campus and felt like that they could get a pass. I remember that. My point is this. We have a huge opportunity. Anybody in here from Maryland? I don't know if you guys saw in the news, you know, just yesterday. So sorry. Another elected Democrat who used the N-word regarding Prince George's County, which is the wealthiest African-American-led county in the country. They're giving us opportunity for us to make our case that their mask is coming off. And the real history of the Democrat Party is being exposed. 
Woo! I just want to know if I got some people in, in, in this room with me who are willing to fight for our principles yeah. Yeah. to help pull off that mask and expose the reality of those people who yeah. seemingly try to make they make people think that they're for us, but they're not for us. Yeah. Man, bro. I just want to encourage you, we got a lot of work to do between now and 2020. Katrina, do we got work to do? We got a lot of work to do. So I want to, are the people in this room ready to galvanize, to work, Woo! to make America great again? Yeah. Are those people in this room tonight? You can do a little sure. bit more than that. Sure. I'm a black preacher. Are those people sure. in this room tonight? Woo -hoo! I want to encourage you to go forward, to make a difference. We can actually win, not just in Virginia. We can win in other states if we're willing to work together. God bless you all. Armstrong. Good evening. This is a fantastic looking crowd here, guys. Y'all look great out here. So it is an honor to be speaking before you. So Glenn McCall is the gentleman that I'm going to be presenting with. I've had the pleasure of serving with Glenn McCall on the Republican National Committee for the last uh, few years. Uh, when I came on in 2012, you know, Glenn was the guy who, who was one of the leaders who I went to for advice. Glenn is, is, is a leader on the RNC. He's currently chairman of the budget committee. Uh, so that's chair of a, of a $100 million organization of the budget committee. Thank you, Glenn, for doing that. I noticed when Reince Priebus was chair, he would always call on Glenn to, to, um, to, to do things and serve in leadership positions. I'm on, I serve in Texas as a Republican National Committee man. Glenn is in South Carolina. And, and in the southern region, we always ask on Glenn to lead. He was elected to the budget committee there. And so Glenn has just been a leader wherever he has been and wherever he's served. I'm going to read some excerpts from some folks in South Carolina who know Glenn best. This is from Hope Walker, who is the executive director for the South Carolina Republican Party. She says, within the South Carolina GOP, Glenn serves as chair of our budget committee and on the platform committee. Glenn is highly regarded throughout our state. When Glenn gets up to speak, everyone listens, not because of the various titles that he holds, but because he is a friend to all and that he has a voice that everyone listens to. Hope Walker, South Carolina Republican Party. This from Cindy Costa. Thank all of you for being here. Thank you, Robin. And, and uh, uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank Camilla and the team and uh, when she called me uh, Monday, they were so thankful she did. I said, Camilla, I wasn't planning to be there uh, 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 tonight. Uh, had some other things, but we rearranged those. And uh, I, I guess on behalf of uh, the Republican National uh, Committee, men and women, which uh, our chairwoman uh, called them out, uh, uh, Dr. Armstrong, Dr. Fisher, and Javon, uh, I accept this award uh, on their behalf, but most importantly, I accept this war, uh, award on the behalf of our chairwoman. If uh, Chairman Priebus had asked me to work in 2013 on the Growth and Opportunity Report, so I was one of the five co-chairs, and uh, one of them was strategic engagement, which this is part of that, that we should recognize uh, people of color, uh, across all spectrums of ethnicity for what they have done for our party. But Chairwoman McDaniel have really elevated that, and she's put it on steroids. And being the budget, uh, budget chair for the Republican National Committee, uh, I know that she is, is serious about identifying strong candidates of color and in turn putting our money where our mouth is, and that's behind them. So I, I uh, suggested that we eliminate the dinners, uh, that we have our big lunches like last year, let's do something nice in the evening, which uh, this is very nice, and let's put some of that money behind some of our rising star candidates. Uh, I think all of us would appreciate that, and that is really, uh, uh, really a tangible thing that we can see. So uh, I hope that one day I'll be a part of this where we recognize her involvement and what she's doing for us and uh, 
Dr. Armstrong, uh, I have not seen, uh, mentioned the president, I have not seen anyone that have done more for the African American community uh, in my lifetime in, in the office of president than President Trump. So I'm proud of him. Uh, as Dean said, we're going to work hard to, to reelect him. And uh, I thank you for what you do, and I thank you for this award. Thank you.